Welcome to the StockMentor.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your Stock Mentor, Brian Johnson, making professional trading simple. And a huge, huge move in the markets today. We saw a gap up to start the day, fell to around 20 points below where we opened, and right back up again to about 10 points above, finally finishing back to about where we started. No, you know, that isn't at all how the day went, actually. I'm just making that up, trying to get some of you to think that maybe it wasn't an exciting day. It wasn't. Didn't do anything today. We wandered sideways. And what do we do when things move sideways? Sit on our hands. That's right. We go to lunch with a friend. We hang out with the dog, play with the kids. Yeah, no trading today on the indices anyway. Could be of could have been some trades on individual stocks, but really nothing to trade on the indices. We saw a gap up and then a move sideways all day long. Look at all those little teeny tiny candles moving sideways, all basing below the strong overhead resistance. So what are we waiting for? Well, this was where I had called for strong overhead resistance. And it looks like we found it today. However, because it's sitting up here, basing up here, uh, that's just a high base formation to me. So uh, until we break this 10,250 and below uh, level, actually below 10,200, honestly, on the Dow, I am looking at this as still short-term bullish in the markets. And that would make sense. Maybe there's a, this looks like a three wave of some sort here, uh, a sideways four and then a five up. If you're an Elliotician type person, I'm sure they're all scrambling around trying to figure out what happened <laughs> to to this stop at, I don't know where it was, 1085 or something. They didn't think it was going to go anything above that. But anyway, it is what it is. And this is why I used technical analysis first and then Elliott wave as confirmation, not indication. So we basically, uh, we're basing up here, waiting for a pop above this. I would certainly why not? Why not expect that to happen before it's all over with? My overhead levels are still the same, though. Uh, here, maybe 10,400, 10,425 before we see some sort of uh, overhead resistance on the Dow. I'm not even sure we make it up that high, but that would be my first level to start watching. I'm actually staying out of the markets here. I'm not going to try to play. I think there's a pullback coming. Now, whether or not it breaks these lows and crashes to a whole new level, I don't really know, uh, but I don't think I'm going to try to play the rest of this five wave up or whatever this is. I don't think there's much left in this push before we see a pullback, and I'm, I'm not going to gamble with it. I'll just wait. So right here, I guess 10,375 would be my next level of overhead resistance uh, based on the 50-day moving average. Uh, that makes perfect sense to me. That would be about seven, eight points on the SPX, which puts us up around 1108. Uh, which I think would be a very uh, logical overhead resistance on the SPX. So 10,375 on the Dow for your next overhead level if we pop to the upside. NDX still holding adder on this little channel we've been watching right back up to the 200 period moving average. Uh, once again, getting very, very toppy here. Uh, that's why I'm not going to try to play these last few points. I just don't think it's worth it. 1820 is still my overhead area. 18, what I say, 1815 to 1820 on the NDX. This is why that will also be the 50-day moving average. And you can see the big climb up here. So we are due for a pullback. Now we never know when. That's why we wait to see if and when it breaks these levels of overhead re resistance or uh, support sitting below us. But 1820, that's only 10 points away. We may see uh, maybe a small gap up tomorrow morning and then a push down from there, kind of a, uh, a gap and go, I guess they call it. I don't know. Everybody has a different name for it, but a gap up and then a move down the rest of the day. Here you see us on a weekly right back to this overhead resistance. We can stick our head above it. What we're really watching for is a close above it. Uh, so tomorrow and Friday, uh, we'll watch this the next two days and see if we can actually get up above it and, more importantly, close above it. I don't care if it puts a wick above it. That means nothing to me if it doesn't actually close above those levels. We'll pay more attention to those tomorrow night. SPX doing the same thing as the Dow, except not quite as tight to this overhead resistance that we are watching on the Dow, where the Dow is right at it. The S uh, SPX is not quite there yet. However, at 1099, basically 1100, a 7-8 point move would put me right back into where I talked about uh, 1103 to 1108 as my overhead resistance levels. 
with uh, 1115 being the next level above that. If we take a look at the SPX on a daily. You can see right back up here to overhead resistance. Of course, 1100 you would suspect would maybe act as a little bit of overhead resistance. Did very well today. I was actually more expecting the 1103 to 1108 area. That might get hit tomorrow, 1108, because of this 50-day moving average, which you can see happening on most of the indices. Here we are on a weekly. Once again, we'll watch this closer uh, tomorrow. But uh, not showing a lot of strength here so far on the push back up. You can see the last two weeks volume or the last week's volume has been uh, lighter. This one we don't know yet. Got a couple days left before we know for sure what kind of volume we'll get on the weekly. We could see a lot of action in the next two days. But uh, once again, I think we're very, very extended here. So be very careful playing anything to the upside. VIX continuing to push its way down. Uh, down another 2.25% today, looking to come back here and test either the 50 or this 21 area. Now we have dropped quite a few days in a row on the VIX, had a nice little rollover in the MACD, but uh, this could put in a symmetrical triangle. We don't know yet. I don't worry too much about the TA on the VIX. I really just like to watch what levels it's at. And obviously anything below this 27 tells me that complacency still resides within the market. Not a lot of fear coming in yet. So no reason to get overly bearish on the market quite yet. VIX on a weekly once again. Got a couple days left before we see anything probably more drastic. But this still looks like a bull pullback. Um, that would mean more bearish action to come in the markets. But that's only confirmed if we can get back up and over these levels, especially if we get up near the 30 level. Apple on a 60 minute down, 85 cents today. Once again, chopping sideways. Not much to play here. Break up.